<laughs> it's Thursday. Sorry. That means we have a vet on hand to answer your pet questions. If you have a question, give us a call. The number is 918-460-KJRH. <laughs> Dr. Joe Landers is here. He's going to be answering those questions. But first, he's brought along a special friend yep, down this, here on the floor. Yep, this is, this is, this is Red. He is <laughs> a pretty easygoing dog. We were rubbing his belly <laughs> yeah. here, and he's, he's waiting patiently for some more. Uh, as you can see, he's a little tripod guy. Mm -hmm. he, he had a leg that was broken and, and had to be amputated. And, uh, uh, but he's a pretty easygoing guy. He's about four or five. Um, it, I, he's probably got some lab in him. I'm yeah. calling him kind of healer just because of the kind of white kind of blaziness on him. Although, frankly, he, this is it. I mean, he's, I, I don't know how he would ever got his leg broke by a car because this is about as active as he gets. And, and, and he, yes, he does have three legs, but he walked in here just fine. Oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, he walks just fine. He does, he does fine. He just, uh, he just wants to be petted. Uh, and so he'll, he'll start leaning up against you and everything, and he's Aww. really great. He's over at the Animal Aid Adoption Center, and that number is uh, 794 6688. Okay. So. All righty. Well, we love Big Red. Absolutely. Such a sweetheart. All right. We've got lots of callers. First, we have Shane in Sepulpa. Good morning, Shane. What's your question? Uh, yeah, my, my dog seems to be allergic to uh, flea and tick medication. He yep. goes kind of crazy. Is, yep. is there an alternative? Well, there is actually an oral flea pill now that will that will kind of kill the fleas. Um, and there are some tick collars that, that can go on that a lot of times it seems to be the dogs are less sensitive because most of those that go on their back are kind of in some oil so that they'll kind of soak in. And I've noticed that, too. There are certain dogs that don't do as well on it, but there's certainly some alternatives out there. So, yeah, it's, it's an ask your veterinarian because there's a plethora of products now. Okay. So. All right. Next, we have Charles in Tulsa. Good morning, Charles. Hey, uh, I'm about to adopt a five-month-old kitten from my vet. At what age do you move a kitten from kitty food to adult cat food? Usually somewhere between 9 and 12 months. It kind of depends. Some of the bigger breeds will go towards 12 months, and some of the mo most common breeds, you're usually done around 9 or 10 months of growing, so around in there somewhere. It certainly won't hurt them if you do it for a little bit longer. Some people feed it out to 14, 15 months because they'll like it, but most of the time right around a year somewhere. So. Okay. Next we have Jay in uh, Claremore. Good morning, Jay. Yes. Or is it Joy? Uh, yes. Hey, Joy, what's your question? Uh, I'm getting ready to move to Florida, uh -huh. and I have four cats that I'm taking with me. Uh -huh. They're strictly indoor cats. Mm -hmm. Any suggestions on making the ride easier? Yeah, sometimes talk to your veterinarian. Sometimes there's some sedatives and stuff. Sometimes we'll also, especially if you have some time, you can put them in their carriers and kind of do a dry run for 15, 20 minutes, you know, just driving around and seeing how they kind of react. Most of them within 15 to 20 minutes will usually kind of calm down. If they don't and they kind of persist for 20, 30 minutes or so, you may want to give them a little a little tranquilization. A lot of them kind of do that. If you're driving and that's maybe a two-day drive, I, I don't know. Sometimes I'll tell people, you know, you get a bigger carrier and you might even have a, a little litter box or something for them. Depends on how long the drive is going to be. But your veterinarian can give you a few tips on that too. So. All right, one last caller, yes. real quick. We have Ron in Bartlesville. Good morning, Ron. What's your question? Hi, good morning. Uh -huh. Good morning. I've got a two-year-old long-haired Siamese cat that looks like she has dandruff, and her mm -hmm. hair just comes off just in droves. And yep. I just wonder there's any connection between the two of those what can you do for them well a lot of times you want to get to the bottom of it and figure out I mean if they have any fleas of course uh, and even just a few because some of them can be really sensitive and and they get little hives and their hair kind of falls out and, and dander kind of comes you can see hives on us pretty easily the other deal is if there's other allergies kind of going on uh, a lot of times about two years old is when it kind of starts and this is in, in my opinion anyway or, or what I've said and seen on the weather here it's been very high pollen and spores and things and most of them that are even inside, you know, you'll open the door, the air conditioner comes mm -hmm. on, and, and you'll still get a dose of the stuff. So, All right. But you'll have that checked out. Good advice. Big Red has fallen asleep on us. Yes. He's so cute. Again, is it Animal Aid where you can... An Animal Aid. Uh, okay. It's over at the Adoption Center, okay. uh, 794-6688. Hopefully I memorized that right. All right. You can go to <laughs> AnimalAid.org. And Dr. Landers is here every Thursday to answer your pet questions. If you missed any of today's segment, go to KJRH.com. Just click on the Lifestyle tab. You can learn about other pets who need homes and find more. Uh, find out more about Heritage Veterinary Hospital. Dr.